the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has loved God and Father of our Holy Spirit, will be with you and also with you. My brothers and sisters, prepare to save us now. Prepare to receive us now. For the Christmas of the Sacred Heart, let us all turn it. Let us call to mind our sins. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In my early work, Theophilus, I dealt with everything Jesus had done and taught from the beginning until the day he gave his instruction to the apostles he had chosen through his, the Holy Spirit, and he was taken up to heaven. He had shown himself alive to them after his passion by many demonstrations for 40 days. He had continued to appear to them and tell them about the kingdom of God. When he had been at the table with them, he had told them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for him what the Father had promised. It is, he had said, what you have heard me speak about. John baptised with water, but you, not many days from now, will be baptised with the Holy Spirit. Now having met together, I asked him, Lord, has the time come? Are you going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, it is not for you to know time or dates that the Father has decided by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and then you will be my witnesses, not only in Jerusalem, but throughout Judea and Samaria, and indeed to the end of the earth. And he said this, he was lifted up while they looked on, and a cloud took him from their sight. They were still staring into the sky when suddenly two men in white were standing near, and they said, why are you men from Galilee standing here looking into the sky? Jesus, who had been taken up from you into heaven, the same Jesus will come back in the same way as you have seen him go there. The word of the Lord. Jesus has been taken up to heaven and he will come again. Jesus 
has been taken up to heaven, and he will come again. Alleluia. All peoples, clap your hands, cry to God with shouts of joy. For the Lord, the Most High, we must fear, great King over all the earth. Jesus has been taken up to heaven, and he will come again. Alleluia. God goes up with shouts of joy. The Lord goes up with trumpet blast. Sing praise for our God, sing praise. Sing praise to our King, sing praise. Jesus has been taken up to heaven, and he will come again. Alleluia. God is King of all the earth. Sing praise with all your skill. God is King over the nations, God reigns on his holy throne. Jesus has been taken up to heaven, and he will come again. Alleluia. A reading from St. Paul's letter to the Ephesians. May the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, give you a spirit of wisdom and perception of what is revealed, to bring you to full knowledge of him. May he enlighten the eyes of your mind, so that you can see what hope his call holds for you, what rich glories he has promised the saints will inherit, and how infinitely great is the power that he has exercised for us believers. This you can tell from the strength of his power at work in Christ. When he used it to raise him from the dead and to make him sit at his right hand in heaven, far above every sovereignty, authority, power or domination, or any other name that can be named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. He has put all things under his feet and made him, as the ruler of everything, the head of the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills the whole creation. The word of the Lord. Let us prepare to greet the gospel by saying the gospel acclamation. Alleluia, alleluia. Go. Make disciples of all the nations. I am with you always. Yes, to the end of time. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. The eleven disciples set out for Galilee to the mountain where Jesus had arranged to meet them. When they saw him, they fell down before him, though some hesitated. Jesus came up and spoke to them. He said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations. Baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And teach them to observe all the commands that I gave you. And know I am with you always, yes, to the end of time. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> There's a great priest of this diocese who was a student with me at Oscar College 50 years ago. And by his own admission, he was not, and is not, the most intellectual of people, but he is a man of great natural intelligence and sense. So much so that he could sometimes explain things much more simply than the theologians could. 
When we were students, we had to have oral exams at the end of every term. And if you failed, you had to do it again, you had to have a retake. And this wonderful priest, we had a party for his 21st, that is not his 21st birthday, that was his 21st retake, which, of course, he failed. <coughs> but, <coughs> for all of that, he has been one of the great priests of this diocese for the last 45, 46 years. And I remember once, it's important to, to say that he came from Leicester, um, he was asked at college to, to preach on the Feast of the Ascension, which of course is not an easy thing to talk about, this concept of Jesus being lifted up or taken from people's sight. So what did he do? He got up and he said it in two sentences. It's just like this, he said, when Jesus ascended, he went to his rightful place with the Father, just as next season Leicester City will be going to their right place in the First Division. And that was the end of it. And I thought, fair enough, fair enough. It is a very difficult thing. But I asked if we could have the Mass in this church today for a particular reason, and also that Father would be able to lead us because this is the church that he conceived all those years ago and that it was his dream to have a church and a place where people could meet. More than that, Father Terry knew and knows what this church is for. It's a place of faith, a place of prayer. And above me is this remarkable piece of art. The way that we interpret art is often a very personal matter. And I'm not sure what was in your mind, Father, when you commissioned this. But as soon as I came into this church for the first time, I saw not Jesus risen, but Jesus ascended. That's what I thought it was. It's Jesus being taken up to the Father. And it's interesting, in St. Luke's account, he uses the same word to describe Jesus being lifted up on the cross to him being lifted up into heaven at his ascension. The word is analemsis. And so the ascension is the fulfilment of Jesus' triumph, where he goes to glory and beckons all of us to come with him. But look carefully, if you will, at this beautiful piece of art, this beautiful statue here, which Carl County created for us. If you look very carefully, you will see our Lord's right hand is stretched out over people. It's almost as if he is blessing us and putting his protective hand over us. But his left hand is turned the other way. His left hand is calling us. And it is as if, in this representation, Jesus is not only blessing us, but he is calling us to come with him. And that's the meaning of this feast. An hour ago, I celebrated the cremation of a lovely lady from Hinckley, Mrs. Betty Orton, and said the words of the Gospel that we've used countless times just lately. Yesterday afternoon, I spoke them into the ear of a man of this parish who is going to die soon. I'm going now to prepare a place for you, and after I'm gone and prepared you a place, I shall return to take you with me, so that where I am, you may be too. That is what, to me, this statue means that the Lord is taking his leave, but that he is coming back to take us with him so that where he is, we can be too. And that's the great joy of this feast, that Jesus is taken up into the glory of the Father. His life's work on earth is ended. He can now rejoice in the presence of his Father forever. But that's not all. 
Of course, Jesus' life work is not ended. The call to glory, the call to be with him, has been extended all over the world for the past 2,000 years. It is a call that is made to people in the name of Jesus, not only by those who are officially called to preach his gospel, but those millions more who preach the gospel of Jesus without words each day. Their faith, your faith, your testimony, your and mine living out of our lives as followers of Jesus expresses not only something about who he is, but who we are and who we will be. Because when we are doing that, through the, often through the most ordinary things of life, Jesus is calling people. Jesus is reminding them that he has a place for them. Today we celebrated the funeral of Mrs. Betty Water. On Friday we will celebrate the funeral of Mr. Derek Telford. We have commemorated many people in these past few weeks and sadly there will be many more. But what we say to them when they are dying and when they have died is a reminder of what we have tried to say in the Lord's name to each other every day. Jesus is inviting us to share his glory. And the very best thing of all is that he is not simply inviting us to share that glory when we have died, but to share it today. Today we taste the life of what we will be. And above all else, we taste it here in this Holy Eucharist. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Anyone who eats this bread will live forever. Anyone who eats this bread has eternal life, present tense, and I will raise him up on the last day. The glory of Jesus' ascension is not simply about the end of time. It is for you and I every day. Jesus is ascending, is going to the Father every day. Jesus is blessing us with that right hand every day. Jesus is calling us to him with his left hand every day. What a wonderful thing it is to come into this church and be reminded of that beautiful truth of our faith every day. some specially written bidding prayers but I'd like to ask you to remember in those prayers several people obviously Mr Derek Telford who's died Mrs Nancy Kieran of Bowell who died on Monday evening Mr Eric West of our Old Shilton community who is very seriously ill and near the end of his life Mrs. Irene Gunway of our Market Bosworth community, who is also nearing the end of her life. And many more people who are sick or in hospital at the moment. We keep them in our minds as we now offer to Almighty God these prayers. Please give us a spirit of wisdom and perception of what you would reveal to us and enlighten the eyes of our minds so that we can see what hope your call holds for us. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. 
May your parents who bring their child for baptism be given the grace to keep the promises they make, informing them in faith. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for those among us preparing for the First Holy Communion and Confirmation at this time. Be with them to encourage and strengthen them. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Make us firm in our conviction and sure in our hope that our faith is based on real events and a strong foundation of truth. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for our Bishop Patrick. Please be with him and, him and help him to be a good and wise shepherd of your flock in our diocese. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for all who have died and especially today for members of our own families. May they share in the glory Jesus has promised all who follow him. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We rejoice with Mary, our mother, in the glory of her son as we pray with her. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. In a moment of silence, we place our personal needs before our good and living God. Loving Father, fill us all with your Spirit in Jesus, your Son. May we think with the mind of Christ, see with the eyes of Christ, speak with the words of Christ, serve with the hands of Christ, love with the heart of Christ, and live with the life of Christ, who is our Lord forever and ever. Amen. Blessed be God forever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who holds in share to save our humanity. Blessed be you, Lord God of all creation. Even as we have this wine to walk the fruit of the vine and what we do with that, it will become a spiritual dream. Blessed be God forever. Lord God, we ask you to receive us. And we plead with the sacrifice we offer you. We humble and we come to our help us. Set the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church.
them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. Father, it is our duty and salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks through your beloved Son Jesus Christ. He is the word through whom you made the universe, the Saviour who sent to redeem us. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh and was born of the Virgin Mary. For our sake, he opened his arms on the cross. He put an end to death and revealed the resurrection. In this he fulfilled your will and one for your holy people. And so, we join the angels and saints in proclaiming your glory as we say. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed the fountain of all holiness. Let your spirit come upon us these gifts to make them holy, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. But he was before to fail, a death we freely have spent next to his accepted. He took bread and gave you thanks. He broke the bread and gave it to his disciples and said, this for you and eat it. This is my body which is given up to you. And so God was ending it all the cup. Again he gave you thanks and praise. He gave the cup to his disciples and said, Take this for you and drink from it. This is his cup of my blood, the blood of the Lord, and you will have a lasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this, this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, Lord Jesus, until you come again. death and resurrection, we offer you, Father, this life-giving bread, this saving cup. We thank you for counting as worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. May all of us who share in the body and blood of Christ be brought together in unity by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church and our love. Make us come in love together with Francis our Pope and Patrick our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember my brothers and sisters who have come to their rest in the hope of rising again. Bring them and all the departed into the light of your presence. Have mercy on us all. Make us worthy to share eternal life with Mary the Virgin Mother of God, with the Apostles and with all the saints who have done who have their will throughout the ages. May we praise you in union with them and give you glory to Christ our Lord. Let us pray with the confidence of the Father in the words of our Saviour James. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. And grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin and protect us from all anxiety as we await in 
joy of the world for the coming of our Saviour Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to the entire apostles, I leave you peace. My peace I give you. But not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. And so with you. That's it. Take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free me from all my sins and from every evil. Keep me faithful to your teaching, and never let me be part here from you. Mm -hmm. This is the love of God. You take away the sins of the world. Happy are those who call to his son. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Bring the body of Christ. Bring me to my state of lost in clay. May the blood of Christ also bring me to everlasting faith. Be touched. Just before Father gives us a blessing, I want to say what a privilege it's been for us today to be able to celebrate Mass together here in this church, which you love so much. Um, it's a long time since we yeah, celebrated yeah. Mass here in this church, <laughs> and you did fine, you did fine. You did fine, it's lovely. Everybody's going to be so pleased. They'll all know you're still alive now, Father. Yeah, you're still alive and kicking, that's the thing. Which you don't need that whole time with somebody minutes and this makes me in my sixty what wrong with the deal. Yeah, did it great. Yeah. You did very well. Just on a personal note before we finish, um, I would like to give a, a message to someone I have uh, loved and admired 
from the very first day of his life. Mm -hmm. That is my brother. So uh, happy birthday, Ken. Mm -hmm. Do you like to give us the blessing? Give us the blessing. Mm -hmm. That's right. no, 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 no. May Almighty God bless us. Mm -hmm. Mass is ended. Go now in peace. New praises begin.